The paint job on this seven-year-old Ford Explorer is still in great shape overall, but there is one big exception to that, and that is the front edge of the hood. Now, Ford has many aluminum hoods on its vehicles, and they have a history of bubbling paint where the aluminum actually starts to corrode and pop the paint off. It typically starts at the edge of the hood, and this vehicle is showing that exact thing. See, there is an area of bubbling paint. There is an area of bubbling paint. If we go around, we can see there's a chip, and there's bubbling around that chip, and that's just how this all starts, but it just is gonna get worse from here. If we look at the underside of the hood, you can see more of what I was talking about. All of this paint is starting to crack and peel back right under the edge of the hood. So on the outside, of the vehicle with the hood down. You don't really notice this happening, but as soon as you lift the hood and look, you can see that that problem is very prominent right under the front edge of the hood. So we don't want to focus solely on the, on the outside of the hood. We also want to address this underneath because this is sort of like a cancer. And if we just paint, repaint the outside, uh, this peeling is gonna continue and just peel the new paint off. So I'm gonna try to clean this up by getting rid of all of the chips and bubble areas, sanding it down, putting primer on it, and then paint to match the original white on this Ford Explorer. To start, I am going to scrape some of this paint off the underside. So if you pull the weather stripping back, you can see back here, the hood looks fine. And then there's a seam right up here. And right at that seam is where we see all this cracking and peeling. Um, so I'm just gonna take uh, a pick and scrape down that seam and kind of feel for where the paint is most loose. And I'm switching to a small flat screwdriver now just to act a little bit more like a scraper to get some of these stubborn paint chips off. So now it seems like all of the loose paint has been removed. So the, the next step is to sand this, but first I'm gonna do this scraping process over the whole front edge of the hood, basically between the two headlights. And it may seem a bit excessive when you're scraping the paint off the hood, uh, when you're going across the, the whole edge of the hood. But the last thing you want to do is paint over a loose, flaky piece of old paint. So it's okay to, to make a little bit of a mess. Now it's time to do the same thing on the outside of the hood or the exterior of the hood. So here you can see a large bubble. So we're just gonna start at the edge where we left off and scrape with our screwdriver or scraper. And if it doesn't come off at first, but you can see a blemish, just go ahead and keep scraping because you'll probably get, get it here before long. And again, the worst thing you can do is paint over a bubble or something like that because you really need the paint to bond to something that is bonded to the metal. And try not to gouge the aluminum or the base metal, you know, once you get to it. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. Maybe a little more up here. I'm just gonna do that across the whole hood. And when you're going down the edge of the hood, you know, that's where, again, uh, most of this corrosion starts. So be sure to really kind of scrape the edge as you go down. And I like to hold like, the screwdriver between my two fingers and use that as a guide to just run down the edge and look for bubbles or more loose flakes. Now that we went over all of the bubbles and chips with our screwdriver, now I'm gonna go over them with 180 grit and then 400 grit sandpaper to just smooth it out to the touch so that when you close your eyes, you cannot feel all of those dips and valleys and gouges where you just scraped off the loose paint. If 
you want to put another coat of paint on a vehicle that already has paint, you do need to rough up the old paint. So what I'm doing here has two purposes. One, to flatten out, and two, to just rough up the surface so that it's not a glossy, smooth uh, finish around these repairs. Say that's good just like that so you'll notice that the aluminum got really shiny um, that is what true aluminum looks like is a, a nice bright shiny material but the reason that these chips are dull is because of that corrosion that I was talking about the dark gray is aluminum oxide and so that naturally forms on aluminum very quickly when exposed to um, air and moisture in the air so this shiny aluminum will not last it will go back to a dull finish but before I put primer on it, I will want to get it to be that shiny finish again. So just know that this is what you want the aluminum to look like when you put primer on it. Very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna do that down the whole edge of the hood and then I also need to Remember to sand the underside where I was scraping earlier with my screwdriver and pick. And to do that, I'll raise the hood back up and I'll just run my sandpaper along the underside like this. After a couple rounds of 180 and then 400 grit sandpaper, these repair areas are very smooth to the touch. So I like the way they cleaned up. So now that we have this all cleaned up, we are ready to put our primer on. Before we spray anything though, we need to mask off and cover the car so that only the area where we want the repair done is getting primer. So the way that I am choosing to do this is that my total work area for paint and primer is gonna be this, this band along the front of the hood. Basically up, or from the edge of the hood, up until you get to this crease. So for primer, I'm gonna spray the lower half of that band, which is about one inch. And then when I go to paint, I will allow spray to go across this entire band, which is about two inches. But with both of those steps, you want to make your edge as soft as possible. So I'm not going to put just a strip of tape right here. I'm actually going to fan out a piece of tape, sort of like my hand is, uh, so that there's a soft edge about one inch up from the edge. As you go along in this project, you also wanna keep your work area clean because you're gonna be creating a lot of dust and debris as you sand and scrape on these areas. So a good way to do that is with some water-based cleaner. I like Sparkle. Um, there's uh, other cleaners out there, but just make sure it's something water-based, something that you can easily wipe off later. And then before you go to actually paint, you'll want to use alcohol or mineral spirits to clean the area before you spray it with paint. I have a nice clean surface here and I'm gonna put my tape on. So this is what it looks like when your area is ready for painting. So the car is pretty much completely covered in painter's plastic, including the top of the hood and the engine compartment. And then the area where I am actually painting is surrounded by masking tape, in this case, green frog tape. So there's two strips here, one to hold the plastic down and then one to actually create the edge that I wanted. And you can see that um, I have the masking tape or the painter's tape peeled up. So now I will aim for the bottom one inch and then this standing up on edge like this will essentially act like an air deflector. So it'll create a bit of a soft edge instead of a hard edge that you would get if you just laid the tape across a straight line. If I lift up the hood here, 
You can see again, the engine compartment is covered in plastic. And then the underside of the hood also has some painter's tape to protect the weather stripping. And applying this to the weather stripping was really easy. I basically put a piece of tape on the weather stripping to where the middle of the tape laid on the weather stripping. And then I just pulled the weather stripping back and tucked the tape up around that edge. So now I can pull it down and spray, pull it down and spray, pull it down and spray. So that will make spraying that the underside of that lip a lot easier without just nailing that weather stripping. Primer has been drying for about 24 hours here in a 60 degree Fahrenheit shop. So now I'm gonna peel back the closest layer of masking tape to reveal that edge that I can then sand down and paint. See that edge, how it's just a little bit softened? That's what you get when you stand the tape up like this. It's not a perfectly soft edge. You know, it's still gonna require sanding, but your finger doesn't really feel much there. It just gives it just a little bit of feather at the edge. And this is what it looks like with that outer layer of tape removed. You can see it's not a perfect feather. It's not perfectly consistent. There's not a straight line really to be seen, but I actually like that. I think it'll make it easier for me to kind of make this all blend in if I don't have a hard line anywhere. The only places I do actually have hard lines are at the ends. I forgot to stand the tape up. So right there, I'll have to just kind of blend that in um, and feather that out. So I'm gonna hit this now with a little bit of 400 and then 600 grit sandpaper. Before I do any sanding, just take a look across it and notice that you cannot see where any of those damaged areas were. You know, you can see a little bit of variation just in spray pattern, but you, you can't see any obvious outlines of chips or, you know, all that, the large area where I removed the paint. That's why we put all the time in sanding it to begin with is to give you a nice smooth surface to put the primer on because then the primer will be smooth for the paint and so on. So, okay, let's get the sanding. Okay, I've got my 400 grit sanding sponge here and I'm just gonna dip it in a little water and start buffing this here.
Very good. So I'm just gonna continue that way, going down the, the length of the hood. And it's also good to kind of clean your area as you go, just so that you don't get a bunch of residue drying uh, that you then have to clean, you know, sand off again. After 400 grit and then 800 grit, this is super smooth. It really felt good even after just the 400 grit, but, but man, it just feels really, really good now. Very, very smooth. So there's a textural difference between the old clear coat and the primer, but you cannot feel any surface features at all. It just feels flat. The primer is all sanded smooth, but this paint chip on the driver's side is right above the primer line, so I'm gonna go ahead and just treat it with a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper and water, just to get that chip a little bit smoothed out. Okay, I'm gonna say that's good there. So it just, you can see it, it just broke through to the aluminum in the center there. I'm gonna try just painting directly over that. I'm gonna wipe down the, the area with a little bit of alcohol. So now I'm going to put the masking tape back or a strip of masking tape back on there. And I'm gonna go essentially towards the edge of the current masking tape, but I just want that flare. I want the tape to be standing on edge. So the next layer of tape is now installed and I'm ready to spray the white top coat. So for this soft edge or the, the tape lip to have maximum benefit, you don't want to spray directly back into it. You want to kind of spray down on it. having some trouble with this uh, duplicolor nozzle. It's acting like it's wanting to plug. It's starting to splatter. So it did, it did splatter a little bit, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. The trick to get it to stop splattering was to clean the nozzle out by holding the can upside down let it blow out, just clear the propellant, and then turn it back right side up and resume the spraying. So that's what I'd call the tack coat. On the can it says to wait 10 minutes between coats, so I will give it 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat on, a second coat, because this first coat was super light, so I think it probably is already uh, dry enough for another coat. I'm just gonna do another pass, pointed up at the lip of the hood uh, to try to start to get the edge of the hood itself. This, these coats are going on pretty thin, so I'm gonna do another pass on this before I let it dry. Primer's getting to where it's difficult to see. It almost looks like a shadow under the paint. So I'm gonna say that's good for the second coat. It's been another 10 minutes or so, and so I'm gonna put a third coat on, and this time I'm gonna try to get the primer to disappear completely.
not too worried about the coverage on the underside of the hood, but I do want a little bit of paint to go over that primer that we sprayed earlier. Call that good for the color coat. Just so you know, the paint I've been using here is Duplicolor Oxford White is the standard white on these Explorers. We'll see how it looks when it dries. I can already tell it's not gonna be as glossy as the rest of the paint. So I think I'll try 2000 grit sandpaper to see if I can get it to gloss up a little bit. After that, I will spray it with some clear coat. But one step at a time, I'm gonna let this dry for about another 24 hours. After 24 hours, our three coats of Dupacolor Oxford White turned out pretty good. I think the, the color match, so here's some factory color, here's Dupa color. I think the color match looks very, very good. The texture is much more of a, of a rough satin finish on the Dupa color, so it's, it's definitely not going to blend in with the rest of the hood the way it sits right now. So see, that's the factory finish right there on the right, that really glossy strip. And then where the Dupa color feathers out, it gets really uh, kind of rough and textured, and then it goes to more of a, a, a satin finish there. Here's the view with the tape off, and again, you can really see the satin finish on the Dupa color, and then when we get to the edge, it goes back to a gloss factory finish. The front here, I'm not actually too worried about because I plan to put a, a bug deflector, but I do need to feather out these edges where it transitions from the satin to the glossy and over here somehow I ended up with it almost looks like a little bit of primer that hid uh, under the edge of the tape so I also need to address that over here I'm gonna try hitting that with some 2000 grit and just see see what that does Now this may not be aggressive enough, but I would rather start not aggressive enough rather than start too aggressive. I don't want to take all the paint off that I, I just applied. I think I got that, that primer pretty well taken care of. Now I'm just going to try to knock the top of this color coat down. This is just an experiment. We're just, we're learning here. Okay, so I definitely took some of the shine off the factory paint there. I really don't think you want to do a whole lot of sanding on this, but you know, in spots, it's just unavoidable based on how textured this paint came out. I, think. I mean, you can hear it on my finger. You know, it sounds sandy. And this feels much, much smoother. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the whole hood right now with this 2000 grit, uh, just to smooth that texture out a little bit. And then I'll come back um, at a later date with some clear coat. So I sanded it here with 2000 grit and the finish got duller, which makes sense because of the sanding, but the texture got much smoother. So it's hard to show this in the video, but just feeling it, it no longer feels sandy. It feels it feels really kind of like a, a smooth satin finish. So there's a few problem spots, I would say. One is this dark seam here. And then there's a few spots like this that almost look like chips, but I'm thinking that it's where the top coat, the color coat did not bond to the primer. As I went over it to get with the sandpaper to get rid of that sandy finish, a few areas like this just popped off and they had kind of looked like small bubbles to start with. So I'm gonna actually go over and hit 
these problem spots, so this seam and the few spots like that, with a little bit more color coat. So I'm gonna just mask around those areas and just focus my spray there. Beware when your can starts to get low, it's gonna start spitting. So I ran into that here and I got a, a couple big blobs that I actually wiped back off with a paper towel. So my can of Dupacolor Color Match Oxford White is basically out. And so I'm actually gonna use this opportunity to try this paint pin, also from Dupacolor, to see if I can get that last little spot there covered up with Oxford White paint. I'm gonna use a little trick that I saw in someone else's video. And that's to essentially dab the paint over in another area. So now I'm just gonna dab the tip in that paint and then dab it over here without actually depressing the tip. I'm just gonna use it like a tiny brush. Try my luck at that. So this will be an experiment for the paint pen. It did definitely cover and the color match looks good. Yeah, it's still applied. I got more paint than, than necessary on that little spot. So it's been another 24 hours and our touch up of the color coat looks a lot better. I don't see any of those noticeable chips um, down the front in a few spots. And this edge here looks a lot better. So if you remember, it had that dark look to it where you could see, really see the edge of the, the new paint. You can still see a little bit of a line, but it is much, much, much better. And then where we used the paint pen, that actually turned out really good. If you really just needed to cover up, uh, you know, a chip or something, that paint pen seemed to have good paint good color and, and decent finish even without any clear coat but now i'm going to sand again with 2000 grit and water the areas that i touched up and uh, bring it back to a uniform surface texture i just went over the recoated areas with some 2000 grit sandpaper and water and i'll say that uh, it's highlighting for me the danger of sanding the color coat so you can see here where i put used the paint pen to cover up a chip and when I sanded it some of the chip looks like it came back you can see it popped off a little piece of the recoat or a little piece of the new paint and then the same thing happened over here right there if you can see it so I was trying to cover up you know some of these little spots that were missing color coat and when I sanded them smooth, uh, it just came back out. And I sanded this area over here, it started to darken, kind of like this edge over here did. You know, it's almost like it's uh, becoming a valley instead of just a feathered edge. The major bubbles and imperfections in the paint are long gone, so the restoration is coming along pretty nicely overall, but I might just end up with a couple little spots uh, of missing color coat. But I'm willing to live with that rather than uh, keep trying to cover it up and then take it back off and risk making it worse. So again, you know, sanding in this situation is apparently not always a good thing. So I'm tempted to just leave it before it gets, uh, before any more imperfections are created and uh, just prep it for clear and um, try to just focus on getting the texture or the finish back to match the, the OEM finish.